Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on anti-cancer chemotherapy. In this video, what we're going to talk about is uh, a platinum-containing compound known as cisplatin. Okay, uh, and this is used uh, to treat uh, solid tumours, such as um, sarcomas, um, it's used to treat uh, lymphomas, it's used to treat certain forms of carcinoma, such as small cell lung carcinoma, uh, also ovarian carcinomas, uh, things like that. Uh, I think it can also be used to treat bladder cancer and testicular cancer. Okay, right. Uh, so, let's see what the name of this drug is uh, in full, uh, because this platin is kind of like its shorthand name, and uh, we'll then see uh, how this drug actually works. So cisplatin is short for cisdiamine dichloroplatinum. Okay, and this is a very uh, simple uh, structured molecule, okay? Cisdiamine dichloroplatinum. Okay, so dichloroplatinum. Okay, so now let's draw its um, molecular formula out. Right, so at the centre, it has a platinum atom, so we'll draw that platinum atom first. So here's the platinum, and the, uh, the symbol for platinum is to have this PT, like so, okay? And then we know it's got diamine, which means that we've got two amine groups coming off this platinum atom, and then dichloro means that we have two chloride atoms coming off uh, the platinum as well, so we need to have a... Uh, two amino groups bound here, so let's put those on first. So here are our amino groups, here's one, and we'll have the other one over here. This is our next amino group, and then we also need two chloride atoms covalently bound to it. Okay, so we'll have a chloride atom, well, chlorine atom uh, bound here, and also another chlorine atom bound here. So this is the structure of cis-diamine dichloroplatinum. Now, everything there makes sense apart from the cis. So where does the cis come from? Well, basically, if we look at this structure, if we actually look at how uh, this molecule, uh, if we actually look at the 3D structure of this molecule, then let's draw the platinum first. So we'll have this blob representing the platinum. So here's the platinum atom. Then if we look at it from above, so we're looking at this molecule as though um, basically from the same angle as we see here. And then what we find is that it is in a plane like this. So you'll have the two chloride atoms coming off here, or the two chlorine atoms I should say, coming here. So here's a chlorine atom, and here's a chlorine atom, and I think I'll colour these in. So I'll colour chlorine in blue here. Okay, so these two are both chlorine in blue outlined in blue, and then we'll have platinum in green, okay? So this is platinum here in green. Right, okay, so that's not the full compound then. What we then need to add on are these amino groups. So you'll have a nitrogen here, okay, and another nitrogen here, and then off these you'll then have two hydrogen atoms, like one, and then the other two hydrogens coming off here, so let's label these up as well. So these are the ends, and I won't try and squeeze a hydrogen into those four tiny little blobs. So I'll have N in red, and then we'll have hydrogen in orange. Okay, so you might now be able to see why this is the cis form of this molecule. And there is actually another molecule known as transplatin, which is very in, uh, inactive as a chemotherapy agent. It's not very powerful at all. Okay, so it needs to be this cis isomer. Okay, so why is this called the cis isomer? Well, cis uh, basically means uh, together, basically. So, cis means together, or on the same side as. Okay, so uh, these two amy amino groups, you can see that they're on the same side of this platinum uh, atom, and the two chlorine atoms, they are also on the same side. So if we think about how we could have made this, instead what we could have done is we could have had the platinum in the centre here, so here's the platinum atom again, and then we could have had the chlorine atoms diagonally opposite one another, like so, so here's our chlorine atoms, 
that one seems to have shrunk a little bit, so I'll colour this in again. So, um, we had platinum in green, okay, we had the chlorine atoms in blue, okay, so in blue these are the chlorine atoms, one, and then our second one here, and then we also had amino groups bound uh, to this platinum, so here's our nitrogens which are bound to our platinum, it's a little out of scale now because I've drawn the nitrogens far uh, bigger than the chlorine atoms, okay, so here are our nitrogens, Okay, and then off those nitrogens, you've then got two hydrogens. You've got one hydrogen coming off here, one hydrogen coming off here. I'll label that up as a nitrogen, nitrogen, and then you've got two hydrogens off here. Right, so this, this is not cisplatin. This one's cisplatin. I'm drawing this to show you why that cis at the front of the name is actually important, why you can't just abandon that, why you can't just call this molecule diamine dichloroplatinum. So this would be transdiamine dichloroplatinum. So I'll just label this up. Transdiamine uh, diamine dichloroplatinum. And for short, this molecule is often called um, transplatin. And basically, it's absolutely, well, it's not absolutely, but it's very... Uh, much less effective than cisplatin at uh, treating cancer. So this is transplatin. Right, so it's important that cisplatin is this cis isomer, therefore, of the molecule and not the trans isomer. Right, okay, so let's now see the mechanism of action of cisplatin. So it works by cross-linking DNA. So it's going to work in a similar way to the nitrogen mustards, the nitrosoureas, and also uh, the aziridine that we saw, mitomycin C, that we've seen so far in this playlist. It's going to work by cross-linking DNA and stopping uh, DNA replication and also transcription of the DNA. So stopping both replication of the genome and the production of protein. Okay, and that's how it has its anti-cell division effect. In addition, it's going to activate DNA repair mechanisms which will trigger off uh, the P53 pathway, providing, of course, that your cancer cell doesn't have a mutated P53 pathway, which many cancer cells do. Uh, but if, it, if the P53 pathway is intact, then it may well lead to the apoptosis of the cell. So, we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves, though. Let's discuss how it cross-links DNA. So we'll start off with a little bit of a reminder of the structure of DNA so that we're all on the same page, and then we'll talk about what it's actually going to do. So, the structure of DNA then. So, basically, DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, consists of nucleotides. And the structure of a nucleotide I will draw in cartoon form, like so, and I'm just wondering if I'm going to have enough space to draw this here. In fact, I might just draw one nucleotide here, and then draw the rest of the DNA down below. Okay, so let's label up the different portions of a nucleotide. So you have this phosphate group, which I will show is this little dot here. So this um, circle, little blob here, this represents the phosphate group. Okay, so let's colour that in red. So in red here, this is the phosphate group. Okay, it's smudged and nasty, but never mind. Uh, and then you have the deoxyribose sugar, the sugar portion of the sugar phosphate backbone. Okay, so here, this is uh, the deoxyribose sugar. So it's very specifically two deoxyribose, which means that you don't have uh, an alcohol group coming off the second carbon of this ribose sugar, which, it, which is here, basically. Okay, uh, so let me just clarify this. In ribose, you would have an alcohol group coming off this second hydroxyl group, uh, sorry, coming off this second carbon of the ribose ring here, okay? In 2-deoxyribose, which is the sugar that is used in DNA, um, DNA uh, nucleotides, you do not have an alcohol group coming off that second carbon of the ribose sugar. Then, this next important structure here, this is the organic base of our nucleotide. Okay, and there are four organic bases used in DNA. Adenine and thymine, which go together, they are complementary. 
and then uh, cytosine and guanine. Okay, right, so let me highlight this in green. So in green here, this is our organic base. Right, okay, so uh, now let's put it all together and see uh, an actual uh, DNA double helix. So we'll have multiple nucleotides bound together in a polymer, and that makes a single strand of DNA. So here is our deoxyribose sugar, okay, with the fifth carbon coming off here. Here's its phosphate group, and then let's say it has the organic base as its side group will have adenine, okay? So here is adenine, okay? Then down from that, what you'll have is another um, nucleotide, so the phosphate group of the nucleotide below will form a phosphoester link between uh, its alcohol group and the alcohol group on the third carbon of the deoxyribose sugar of the above nucleotide. So you'll have this polymerization of the nucleotide. So here comes the next nucleotide along. Okay, so here is uh, the next uh, deoxyribose sugar, and then it might have another organic base, and we'll let this be the organic base cytosine. Right. Okay, now on the other strand of the DNA, what you'll then have is the complementary sequence of organic bases. In addition, another important point to understand is that the sugar phosphate backbone will be running in an anti-parallel direction. So let's start off with the complementary organic bases. So the complementary organic base to adenine is thymine, so here's thymine, and the complementary organic base to cytosine is guanine, okay? So here we have guanine, and those will be linked by hydrogen bonds. And there are three hydrogen bonds between cytosine and guanine, and there are two hydrogen bonds between adenine and thymine, okay? Now, let me show you what I mean by uh, the sh sugar phosphate backbone being anti-parallel. So, basically, the sugar phosphate backbone in this case runs in this direction. So, in here it was running like in this direction here. The phosphate groups were sticking up in that direction. Uh, now, what's going to happen is the nucleotides are all going to be pointing in the opposite direction. So, here is the fifth carbon of this nucleotide's deoxyribose sugar. Okay, and it will be linked to the third carbon's hydroxyl group of this next nucleotide's um, deoxyribose sugar. And then here comes the fifth carbon, and then the phosphate group off there. So the fact that these sugar phosphate backbones run in the opposite direction, that is known as anti-parallel. We say that the two DNA strands are anti-parallel. Okay, right. Uh, so, uh, that's a little reminder of the structure of DNA, and of course I've only drawn uh, two nucleotides here because I'm lazy. I don't want to have to draw more than two. So this will go on and on, you'd have another nucleotide here, you'd then go on, and it will go on for, uh, I think the human genome is around three billion uh, nucleotides, basically, so three billion of these. Uh, not all joined together, of course, it's split into uh, many different chromosomes, uh, but it is long, basically, is the message from that. Okay, so this is our reminder of the structure of DNA. What we'll do in the next video is continue this discussion by seeing what cisplatin is actually going to do and how it's going to form crosslinks uh, within the DNA.